So we're here at Freescale um, at the Mobile World Congress 2011. And uh, Freescale recently announced the iMac 6 series. Yep. And that's the ARM Cortex A9. Correct. So we actually announced a family of devices that span from a quad-core device, dual-core device, and two single-core devices. They will all be on the Cortex A9 40 nanometer technology. We're really excited about the family of products. At the high end, we'll have a quad-core device not only at 40 nanometers, but it'll also have a dual HD stream capability for both decode and encode. It'll have 3D graphics IP capable of over 200 million triangles per second, along with a bunch of uh, I.O. integration targeted for both the consumer markets, embedded markets, and automotive. And uh, do you announce uh, the nanometers? Uh, it'll be 40 nanometers TSMC process. Uh, 40 nanometers, so uh, the, the IMAX 51 is at what right now? Uh, 65. 65, and uh, 53? And 65 also. 65 also. So it's the next step. Correct. So we'll be moving to the next process generation. One of the things that we've done very well at Freescale is develop processors with very low power. For example, on the i.MX53 today, we can sustain less than 200 milliwatts of total power doing 1080p H.264 decode. So how soon is this coming? Because there's a point where the, the, it's the pre-production, what's called sampling, and then after that there's a testing. How long does it take, all that? So we'll be uh, sampling the device during the first half of this year, and we expect production on the quad-core, dual-core devices uh, during the early part of the first half of 2012. Does the dual-core come before quad-core, or do they both come at the same time? Uh, dual and quad will come at the same time. So how, co how can they just come at the same time? Is it because the designs are going to be ready at the same time? Or? They are. You know, one of the things that we've done is we've got a strategy at Freescale to really invest in the consumer market, invest in the high end of our portfolio. And so we've allocated enough resources to go work on both pieces of silicon. All right. And what kind of graphics do you use? Uh, we use uh, graphics from a partner IP company. We haven't disclosed who that is. Uh, we will do so later in the year. Uh, but we're very excited about them. We believe that they have market-leading technology. As I mentioned, we can support over 200 million triangles per second, and we think the performance of our 3D graphics engine will be quite phenomenal. And the video playback will support every codec at 1080p? Absolutely. We'll multi-format. We'll do 1080p at any resolution. You can go up to single stream 1080p 60 frames per second, or for 3D uh, stereoscopic recording, you can do things like 1080p decode, uh, even HD encode for 3D encoding. What kind of applications do you foresee for this platform? Can it be in laptops and desktops and servers? Really anything mobile. So I think everything that you mentioned uh, can use this type of technology. We're excited about it because it's got the power profile to go into small for form factor devices like smartphones. Uh, we see it used, being used extensively within tablets as well as e-readers. We've done some e-paper display controller integration into some of these devices and we'll be targeting e-readers. And then certainly from a performance standpoint, I think uh, dual-core, quad-core will become quite interesting in the network market, thin client market, which we target as well. So uh, in the netbook market, there's, there's a need for having a high-definition browser, web browser, and having many tabs open and all that. Can you say something in terms of performance in the memory bandwidth or I.O. speed that goes from 53 or 51 to the IMAX 6? Right, so what has improved there? There's a couple things that we're doing. One, in terms of memory bandwidth, we have a full 64-bit channel uh, memory bus with the iDynamX 6 family. So that's double what we had in the iDynamX 53 family. We think that's very important as you move to quad-core especially. The demands on the memory bus is often the bottleneck uh, within the architecture. And we've seen this over generations having been in this business for the last 10, 12 years. Uh, the other thing that we're doing we think is quite innovative is we're adding in serial ATA into the silicon. And so we will be, I believe, the only ones in the industry that can offer uh, both the highest end memory controller bandwidth as well as integrated serial ATA for things like netbooks that require a lot of storage and are migrating to SSD drives. So does that mean it's uh, SATA? Serial ATA is SATA, right? Correct. It's yeah. like a hard disk. It's like a hard disk. We're partnering with innovative companies like SanDisk as an example that has SSD drives on the chip. They're the first ones to have a BGA uh, 64 gigabyte device on chip, and we can integrate that in natively to the i.MX 6 series because we've integrated in that interface. Can you... Uh can the ARM powered laptop take any advantage of? Uh, have you heard about this uh, hybrid hard disk, where there's a small part of flash, another part of uh, hard disk? Does that in any way speed things up, or is it only in the Windows Intel world? So I think you know, from our perspective, we're a little bit technology agnostic when it comes to those type of devices, so long as they're using standard off-the-shelf interfaces, which, to my knowledge, they are. 
Uh, we'll support it on serial ATA, we'll support it with uh, traditional flash interface uh, on the chip, and so we're pretty much agnostic to the technology itself. Are you in, is specifically targeting servers in any way with IMX6? So we think servers is a really interesting market, and uh, you know our initial focus with the silicon will be on the consumer side, and we will look at the server market and you know work with our early customers to determine how uh, interested they are in, in partnering with us on that. And why would you use IMX6 in the e-reader? So IMX6, one of the things that that offers is the ability to have a faster uh, processor, which helps with things like uh, PDF rendering. So if you're watching, uh, reading a book rather, using a PDF, the pages will turn much quicker. Having the integrated EPD controller provides significantly more performance in general in terms of operating the e-paper display. Would you say that uh, some OS like Ubuntu or Chrome OS really need IMX6, 56, uh, IMX6 to become like a mass market uh, a possibility? Like this is really needed. Like it, uh, is it some, can you somehow say that IMX53 is maybe more like tablets and now if you want a laptop, like a high definition browser, many tabs open, IMX6 is kind of like necessary, right? Yeah, it's a little bit of a continuum. The, you know, the more concurrent uses that you do on a system, so if you, in your example, if you have multiple uh, PC browser windows open, the more of those things you do together, the more there is a need to go to multi-core. So there's not necessarily, it's not necessarily black and white in terms of where it is one stop, where it is the other end, but certainly um, moving to multi-core, quad-core, dual-core will be beneficial. Do you think uh, Honeycomb is uh, uh, suitable for, for laptops, or is not you know the right person to ask? Yeah, so, you know, it's, so it's interesting. I think the way you know, if you listen to what Google says, they're clearly targeting tablets for that space. Uh, it's a touch type of interface. Oftentimes, with a clamshell type of devices, you know, we haven't I think found the right combination for touch to work. So I'm sure we'll see some innovation happening with Honeycomb being put on the laptops. Uh, Microsoft is also innovating from a Windows 8 perspective. And so it'll be interesting. You know, we're going to support both operating systems and we wish them the best of luck. Uh, I think both could be applicable in the clamshell space. Because at Freescale, you're working on uh, uh, Chrome OS. We are working on Chrome. Uh, you know, again, our, our desire is to support uh, multiple operating systems that our customer would use that are all standards based. So that includes Chrome, that includes Google Android, that includes Microsoft as well. And as well as some of the other ones, such as Ubuntu. Because there's a Windows announcement for them. Yeah, we're pretty excited about that. We think the announcement that Microsoft has made with moving Windows 8 to ARM is going to be beneficial for the whole community. We've been working for years with Microsoft on the Windows CE side and look forward to extending that collaboration. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you.